r slash no sleep posted by you slash joe fish 2018 i am a truck driver and i will never pick up another hitchhiker again from a young age i was told to never talk to strangers and through my childhood i never did however in adult life things change there is more reason to talk with people you don't know especially when lonely when i became a truck driver the long and empty roads got the better of me and i'd start giving lifts to hitchhikers who were going to the same place i was it was the perfect solution for my loneliness and often i would become friends with the people i gave lifts to my job was absolutely perfect until that one november night i had dropped off my cargo at the designated warehouse and was on my way back to the depot it was going to be a long drive through the night a few hours into the drive i saw a man at the side of the road with a black bag and a plaque reading the exact same place i was going usually past a certain time i would ignore it and continue my journey but something about this man made me feel like I owed it to him and I could do with some company on the journey anyway. I pulled over, opened my window and asked him where he was going, even though I had already read the sign. He just pointed at his plaque and looked up at me. Something about him made me uneasy but it was too late now, and I told him to hop in. This was a huge mistake. The man climbed in and sat in the passenger seat, he was dressed completely in black, with a silver chain spilling out of the top pocket of his overcoat. At first I was hesitant. Then I got myself together and shook his hand. It was cold, very cold. Not the kind of cold when it has been chilly outside, but the kind when someone has a fever. A wet, clammy, unnatural cold. I looked at his face, he looked like he was in his late fifties, with a grey beard and harsh eyes that put you in your place. I cleared my throat and introduced myself, he sent back a rough mumble that didn't sound like a name. All I said was pleased to meet you and got back onto the road. I decided it best not to try and talk too much to the man unless he talked first, he didn't look like the kind of guy that you'd want to say the wrong thing to. After a couple of minutes, I began to notice how he was constantly rummaging inside the bag, it was making a rather unnerving clinking sound of metal hitting other metal. After around an hour of driving, the man had not stopped rummaging inside the bag. I had also noticed that he had been staring at me for some time, which was creeping me out massively, it really made my skin crawl. On most occasions, if I have a passenger who is not particularly communicative, I would put the radio on but mine had stopped working last week and I still needed to get it fixed. In an effort to stop him staring at me I asked him what's in the bag. I immediately regretted it. He looked right at me and said in a raspy voice mind your own business. I was slightly shocked by this and tried to pass it off as a bit of a sarcastic joke. Although I knew for sure it wasn't. Throughout the journey the rummaging got louder and louder and he started making stranger noises in an extremely low tone. I was so unsettled I began thinking of what to do, I could not go another 3 hours with this man in my truck. He was now clanging whatever was in his bag very hard, he then stopped and started scraping what sounded like a knife against something else. I had, had enough and pulled into the side of the road. I didn't want to confront this guy but I asked him once more what's in the bag. Once again he responded with mind your own business. I nodded and said that we had a puncture on the back tire and asked him if he'd mind checking it out, whilst I got the repair kit. He looked at me with a look of complete hatred, then got out of the truck and went round the back. I put my foot on the gas and drove, I saw him in my tail light stare after me with what looked like a smile spread across his face. His hands looked like they were covered in blood. I still see that image every time I close my eyes. I made it back to the depot, trying desperately to forget the man. Then I realized. He had left his bag. Obviously, I could not help but look in it, but I wish I hadn't. The bag was full of different metal objects, all of them looking like some kind of torture device. From knives and shackles to ropes and bars, I then realized, they were all covered in blood. I don't know why I didn't turn the bag into the police, but I thought that because it had my fingerprints on, it would not end well for me. I took the bag home and did some more searching through it, and to my horror, at the bottom of the bag was a picture of my truck, a picture of the registration and a picture of me holding the bag. I could hardly sleep. But in the end I managed to get a few hours. I definitely couldn't go to the police now, it looked like the bag belonged to me, but I decided that I had to. I put the bag in a box and was about to walk out of the door when I noticed something. The picture of me holding the bag was nailed into the door with a note attached. All it read was mind your own business. Part 2 of this series. Posted by you slash Joe, Fish 2018. I am a truck driver, and there is a reason I don't stay in motels anymore. I have been a truck driver for some time now, and I have experienced many things on the road. 
Some have stayed with me for years, whilst some will probably stay with me forever. One of these experiences will for sure stay with me until the day I die. I had been placed on a very long journey, taking a load 10 hours cross county. There was nothing but dreadful music on the radio and I was beginning to get tired. It had got dark some time ago and was now extremely late. I decided to call in for the night at the next motel I came across, I didn't even care if it was a bad one. I now really wish I had. I pulled up and looked around. The place looked awful, the paint was peeling off the walls, the windows were dirty and there were multiple letters missing from the sign. The strangest part was that there were no cars in the parking lot. On any other occasion I'd have taken that was a strong warning to stay away but I'd been driving all day and did not have the energy to get back in the truck and drive somewhere else. I went over to the reception and there was no one there, I rang the bell and still no one came. I waited a few more minutes, repeatedly ringing the bell. Annoyed, I turned round and began to walk away, but then I heard a voice. I looked round to see an elderly man with very few teeth grinning at wildly. He welcomed me to the motel and asked me if he could be of assistance. I told him that I needed a room for the night and that I'd like a room with a view of my truck. I always ask this at quite motels, it just makes me feel more secure for some reason. He fumbled around for a bit and then threw me a key with a room number on it. I paid him up front because I'd be setting off early in the morning. As I was walking up the stairs I heard him say in a muffled tone you have a great night's sleep, he then chuckled to himself quietly. This should have creeped me out by I was far too exhausted to care. The first thing I noticed when I entered my room was that it was not facing my truck, like I'd asked. Instead just the dumpsters on the other side of the building. The bed was comfy and the room was big, but I couldn't help but feel that something wasn't right. There were stains on the carpet, dark stains. The walls were covered in marks and there was something in a plastic bin bag in the bath. I couldn't tell what it was but it was big, I lifted the top to see in and I was almost sick. Inside was the head of a pig, not nicely severed like a butcher would do, but a deep, rough cut. This was absolutely disgusting, but as the walls were crawling with cockroaches anyway, I decided it best not to use the shower or the bath and drew the curtain across. I tried to forget about what I had seen. I awoke not to the sound of my alarm clock, but the sound of voices outside my room. It was 2 in the morning, who would be out of bed at that time? I just assumed it was another guest and tried to get back to sleep, but before I could, I heard the unmistakable sound of a key in the lock. I flew out of bed and into the bathroom and immediately hid in the tub, trying to ignore the pig's head that lay next to me. The curtain was drawn across but I could see a small amount through a moth-eaten hole in the curtain. I heard the door swing open and the sound of footsteps as someone entered the room. I peeked through the hole to see a man in a ski mask walk over to my bed, he had something in his hand. The man threw off the covers and cursed. I then heard the voice of the man from the reception whisper what's wrong. The man in the ski mask responded he's not here, he must have left earlier than we thought he would. I then saw the man start leaving and a huge amount of relief washed over me. Then he stopped, turned around and walked straight into the bathroom. It felt like my heart had stopped beating. I tried to flatten myself into the bottom of the tub, although I knew it wouldn't do much good. He stood there for a good few minutes. I then heard the man cough, spit something into the sink, and leave. When I was sure that they were gone I got out, grabbed my bag and left. I used the emergency exit at the side of the building, I ran round to my truck and got in, started the engine and drove. As I was leaving I saw someone in the window, staring at me. Grinning his nasty, toothless grin. I didn't look back and got out of there. I'd driven nearly 20 miles when I was pulled over by a highway patrol man. He asked me if I was aware my back doors were hanging open. I told him no and went to check it out. A large amount of my load had been stolen and many other boxes had been slashed open. I told the patrol man everything about the motel and what had happened to me. He shook his head in disbelief and told me something that made me gasp. That motel 20 miles up road? The owner died there four years ago and it's been abandoned ever since.